Good evening, well I should say good morning, it's just gone 1 a.m. So good morning to all of you, my brothers and sisters of the leaf. Um, this morning I'm going to be doing a first impressions of Dunhill Deluxe Navy Rolls, or as it's now known as Navy Rolls, the uh, British, um, probably the EU actually, regulations now do not allow the word deluxe because that sounds too enticing. Um, this particular tin is from 2012 and I have actually had um, a bowl. Um, I've really tried it um, and it was very very tasty. Um, and I just thought it would be appropriate to uh, do a second impression but we'll call it a first impression because I've only had one uh, bowl of it and um, you guys haven't seen it yet. So here we go, here's the tin. Did I say the age? 2012. I uh, went online to find out what these codes mean um, and the code over there, if you can see it, so you've got CB022H61. So the two is the amount of years post 2010. So that would make it 2012. And the H represents the month, which is August. Uh, sorry, is it August? Yeah, the eighth month of the year um, as, as the eighth letter of the alphabet. So this was produced in August 2012. Um, I didn't realize it at the time. Um, I bought it in. 2017, June 17, thinking it was a recent tin. Um, so it was very lucky that I got it. I'm trying to remember where I bought it from. But I'm going to assume it came from America somewhere because in the UK you can't get these tins anymore. There will be bigger tins with bigger warnings on them and so on. And it won't be called Deluxe. It would be called just Navy Rolls. So I'm going to smoke it in the Soren Refberg cracked egg. Um, reason being, it's got a really nice, deep, narrow chamber, which should be perfect for a flake. Although this is a medallion or a coin, um, it's similar characteristics. Um, what I am a bit worried about is that <laughs> this is diminishing very quickly. Um, it's really ready to go in. Um, it doesn't really need to be dried out. So I'm really just going to give it a very rough smooching, as I call it. And that's pretty much it. And in it will go. So this is basically, and essentially, a classic vapour. So it's pure Virginia and Creek. Now before I continue we'll just do a little bit of a tin note. Um, I'm trying to rack my brain as to whether I've already done a first impression because this is I'm getting kind of getting a deja vu here. Um, I'm just looking through my videos to see if I have actually done a first impression. Um, because I remember saying it may I may have just put it on um, IG or something like that. The tin note on this is awesome. To me, I get uh, there is a grassiness there, but I get more than anything else a rich apricot aroma, and it's absolutely divine. I don't think I've ever said before that I got. An apricot aroma. I have seen other people saying uh, talking about apricot aromas on other tobaccos. It's the first time that I can honestly say that this has a really strong, sweet, rich aroma of apricots. Now, one has to bear in mind that this is six years old, at least six years old, and therefore it has matured beautifully. Um, and if you get a current tin from 2017, chances I, I have no idea, but it may well not smell as nice as that, um, but uh, nevertheless, um, if you know, 
the, the first ball that I had, if I remember correctly, the first half was fantastic, second half not so great. We'll see how this one goes. Um, because if it's really, if it goes better, then I will consider cellaring some so I get that age on it and enjoy that added richness. Before I light up, I did want to mention um, and give a couple of shout outs. I don't often do shout outs, but um, in this particular occasion, on this particular occasion, I think it's a special occasion and worthy of a shout out. All shout outs are worthy, but um, I, I don't do them that often, so for me it's worthy. Um, and that is to uh, two new presenters who have done VRs, intro VRs, as a result of my 1500 giveaway. That makes me very, very proud. Um, uh, these are two people who have been viewers for a long time, and as a result of my competition, they've decided to uh, finally um, step over the mark, step up to the plate, throw down the gauntlet, and actually record a video. So those two people are Marco and Narik. I'll put their names down below. Um, so please go ahead and have a look. He's already done a second video showing his uh, pipe collection and um, give him a sub. Um, and the second guy is J Interest 89 Again, I'll put the name down below. Um, check him out. Um, he's done a presentation style similar to mine. He's uh, focused on the subject content rather than the perpendicular pronoun, as in I, um, or himself rather in this case. And um, please go ahead and check out their channels and if you are so moved give them a sub so let's light up so we have the son Refberg cracked egg very very nice pipe it's got a really deep bowl nice sand blast the really nice uh, little smooth part of the on the end of the shank and it is filtered and therefore I shall put a new filter in As many of you will know, I've had a really busy week, lots of late nights. I'm really looking forward to the weekend. Um, it gets to the point where you have so many late nights that you just become a night owl. And I tend to wake up at, at, at seven o'clock or six o'clock at the dinner table, I'm falling asleep. But uh, 10 o'clock, nine, 10 o'clock, I seem to wake up. Anyway, let's light up. The first immediate flavour you get is toasted Virginias, which you'd expect as you light up. So I'm just doing the false light. Um, I should have really looked up this tobacco. I don't know if there is any toppings or any kind of um, sweetener or anything like that in here. I will have to check that. Because if there aren't any, the sweetness that you're getting off the Perique is just, well, presumably off the Virginias, but something's happening, some kind of uh, interaction between the Perique and, and the Virginias in this particular blend, which is really arising to some amazing flavour and aroma especially. Perhaps it could have done with a little bit of drying time. I'm having to draw it quite uh, firmly to get it to light, so I'm getting a little bit of a tingle on the tip of my tongue. So, the initial flavours, there's a fruitiness there, there's grass, a hay grass kind of flavour, Virginia flavours. We 
which is immediately followed by that fruity apricot kind of flavour. There is that apricot flavour there, it's not as pungent as on the aroma, on the tin, but it is there. Getting a little bit of a peppery, spicy kind of kick coming through now. Anyway, I'm going to smoke it down and come back to you. Okay, we're back. Um, a fair way down the bowl. Nice white ash there. It burns down to a nice ash. Um, very, very tasty at the moment. Um, there's plenty of natural tobacco flavor. Topped off by that lovely sweetness, um, which is a fruity, um, like a stone fruit sweetness with a very slightly lighter top edge which is moving back towards that apricot kind of uh, flavor um, but that is really only right at the top edge of that sweetness it's more of a rounded deeper sweetener, uh, sweetness with just that little bit of a uh, top edge as I said um, the perique it leaves a nice um, spicy not quite peppery I'm almost detecting a bit of latakia, but I can't believe there's any latakia in here. But th that's that spiciness is just leaving something on my tongue, which is very nice. Um, I'm not getting any tongue bite. The tingle I got before was just on the light because I was pulling on it too hard to get it lit. But um, no tongue bite at all. Um, very very nice. It is smoking quite warm. But that adds to the charm, I think, of this uh, particular tobacco. Obviously, I wouldn't want it to get hot, but when you draw in, you get that warmth accompanied by the sweetness. It's just a really nice, comforting flavour and, and sensation. I do find, though, and I did find this last time as well, is that the initial impact of the flavors does subside somewhat it's all still there but it does seem to get diluted after a while which almost leads me to kind of believe that there might be some kind of topping on there which is um, burning off as you smoke it down as you get with many aromatics um, where the initial impact subsides after a while I mean it's listed as a purely natural tobacco with no additives but uh, I'm not sure um, so my experience on this smoke, smoke is very similar to the last time which was the first part of the smoke was delightful really really nice flavors everything that I've just described but once you get down past the first half it really it's still a very nice smoke but it just loses that impact of flavor the flavors are there they're a lot milder and you're getting more of a tobacco smoke which is a good thing it's not a bad thing you still get a bit of that fruit you still get a bit of that uh, perique coming through but just a lot milder I would probably say and I'll have to try this on my third bowl whenever I get to it is that rather than smoking it fast at the beginning and that's very easy to do because it's so enjoyable um, it's, it's kind of very uh, addictive and you really just want to keep going back to it but it might help to keep the flavors going to just really sip on it gently it's possible that I've overheated it already um, the bowl is getting quite hot but it's not the thickest of walls this particular pipe um, but um, it's possible that if I take it slower if I keep my cadence slow from the off it's possible that the flavors would last longer anyway um, so I'll leave it at that in terms of this particular tobacco. I will just add in terms of my giveaway, I originally said it would go up to the 6th, um, but I've just realized that I'm actually going away on the 6th. Uh, 
I'm doing a wedding out of town and I'll be away for a couple of days so what I might do is print off all the information and take it with me and possibly I'll be in a hotel somewhere and um, possibly I'll find a suitable spot and do the drawing um, whilst I'm away if not it'll happen just uh, as soon as possible after I come back but I will try to do it on the 6th as I originally committed to do and as per my request or my suggestion at the top of this uh, video please do try and have a look at the two new presenters Marco Narek and J Interest 89 getting a bit of gurgle. I don't recall getting gurgle since I've started using filters but um, on bent pipes you do get that sometimes and possibly um, because I didn't let it dry um, that there's an abundance of liquid coming through and um, and that's probably gathering somewhere around there and gurgle just in case you don't know I'm sure most of you do but in case you don't the how gurgle works is that the moisture that gets collected from the bottom of the tobacco if you have any kind of um, nook or cranny in there somewhere a lot of times with bent pipes the uh, let me show you uh, so a lot of times the direction of the drill at the end of the day a drill bit is straight it's solid and it's straight so it can only go in a straight direction now when the pipe carver is drilling, he's going to drill his uh, bowl, his chamber, and say so it gets to about there. So this has to be drilled exactly right to meet the bottom of the chamber. Um, I think probably most will drill it first and then drill the chamber to meet it. I don't know, to be honest. Um, but what will often happen is that in order to meet the bottom of the chamber sometimes you'll find if you look on a lot of pipes often you'll see a little gouge I don't want to break this pipe down now because it's warm but on bent pipes you know at the end of the day it's bent and it's some somewhere they've got to somehow get the geometry right in order to meet the bowl and sometimes you'll find that although you've got this aperture here the actual drill will commence there maybe with a three or four, four mil uh, uh, drill bit and they'll sometimes even have to go below below that and often you'll find that some pipe carvers they'll put a little insert here an acrylic or a horn or a metal or some kind of insert there to disguise the fact that in actual fact the pipe has been drilled below the main opening and it, it's unsightly so they'll cover it with something um, I'm just gonna if you bear with me a second sorry Let's see if I can find some, a pipe that will show you that Okay, so I've got a pipe. It's not a great example, but you should be able to get the idea. This is a, a Boswell, very nice pipe. Now, if you have a look, focus. All right. So if you have a look there, you can see there's a little gouge. So they've, in order to get that trajectory for the drill bit they've had to start there so the drill has had to go because it's such a steep bend so they've, in order to get there they've had to somehow to, obviously the drill bit has to be straight so they've had to do that so this one's not so bad so they haven't had to do anything but often some pipes it'll be really you know I've had some pipes where it's literally down there so what the carvers do is they will put some kind of um, decorative um, insert um, which will look very nice, but it's really to disguise that gouge. And that's not a criticism, you know, it's a bent pipe, it's, it's hard for them to get the drill exactly right. 
um, and if that's what they need to do that's fine it has no effect on the smoke but going back to the gurgle so what happens is because sometimes they drill so they'll first drill the shank with a straight um, they'll first drill the shank so the shank will be drilled down there and then afterwards they'll drill there so you'll have this little bit of a chamber here um, which can often collect liquid and what happens is as you draw air through that air as it travels past the liquid it irritates the liquid and that's what gurgle is that what that noise you're hearing or that sensation of bubbling is the air traveling past that little bit of liquid that's in the bottom there and just agitating it enough to give you that gurgle um, there are things that pe that you can do you can blow back into the pipe so the the, the liquid is distributed amongst the ash or amongst the dottle I don't know if that's such a good idea because you're putting some really strong tobacco juices back in and it could affect the flavor um, the best thing to do is to put a pipe cleaner down unfortunately you can't do that if you are uh, smoking a filter pipe and you just have to live with it I've seen some people hold the pipe turn it upside down and give it a shake you can do that but it disrupts your whole um, you know the whole cherry at the top and, and everything that you've done to, to light your pipe so you know it's horses for courses you do as it uh, appeals to you and if you can live with a gurgle live with a gurgle you can just hold the pipe up like that as well and it'll just seep down into the bottom of the bowl and that will help but um, yeah that's that okay so that's uh, the end of my second impression of Dunhill Navy Rolls I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching catch you on the next one